So, uh, Susie, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's a pleasure to be with you. Such an honor to be part of this exhibition and book and project. So thank you guys for making time. Of course, of course, we are so happy that you are involved in this project and that we're having this opportunity uh, to talk today. I wanted to start by um, asking you about uh, your weaving origami projects and and if you could maybe tell us a bit about the origins of, of that project. Yeah, it, it's been quite a, quite a journey that weaving origami work sort of came to me over the course of many years, like close to 20. Mm -hmm. um, so it really started in graduate school where I was exploring um, lots of multi-layer weave structures. And I started to really look at Kei Sakamache's work more closely. My graduate work was um, a series of weavings that had open-ended pocket structures that I filled with random things that I had collected on a summer trip kind of around the country um, before my thesis show. Um, I also studied with a woman named Netta Al-Hilali and she had some work that was not loom based, but it was, it was off loom based that I really, I really liked um, that had strange structures that were kind of jettisoning, jettisoning out from the surface of the the cloth, um, but these these things sort of just sat in the back of my my mind. Um, and, and then I, as I entered industry, right after graduate school, I would you know I, I worked the second shift at a textile mill, so I'd work from three to eleven, and then come home and weave. Um, mm -hmm. I and and I would tinker around with with th this kind of strange structures on my own time. And one one thing that I was trying to figure out was um, a, a discontinuous pleat structure that I was just sort of noodling around in, in my own spare time. Um, again, that sat on the back burner through 12 years of industry. Then I started a family. After my second child was born, I left and started, you know, I dusted off my hand loom and I, I really committed to, to hand weaving again. But when, when you have, when you have little kids, you can't really take your loom with you and sit and watch, you know, swimming lessons or gymnastics mm -hmm. lessons. So I um, picked up origami. Actually, it's, it's something that had been um, introduced to me as a child. We had a, we had a man live with us on a uh, cultural exchange for a couple of weeks. And he, he taught me how to fold some origami when I was a child. And that experience sort of just stayed, again, stayed in the back of my mind until it sort of re resurrected. Um, so I started folding origami and discovered a type of origami called tessellation origami, which isn't really folding cranes and and forms like, like figures, but it, is a way of creasing and folding and twisting paper into geometric compositions and overlapping and translucency is kind of a part of a part of it. So I was really I was really drawn to that. As I folded more of this tessellation origami, I really wanted to find some way to bridge weaving and origami together and sort of had a, uh, my aha moment was um, thinking back to these explorations I had done in my spare time, these discontinuous pleats. Mm -hmm. And I, dis I discovered that I could fold the discontinuous pleats into geometric forms. Um, so that was the so the origin of of the uh, weaving or weaving origami, 
but I was in the middle of a move from New Jersey to California. And um, at, at that time I was only really, I, I, knew, I knew I could weave them, but I was only working on paper models and, until we moved to California. And I set up my studio in my garage and I got busy weaving the first origami samples out of linen. I, cho I chose linen because first of all, I love linen and linen holds the, the creases a little bit better than, than other, other fibers. So that's kind of the origin of the, the origami pieces. Um, and, I, and I wove them for, for years and I still dabble in them. I think they're, they're really fun to make. Um, but they do, they do present some challenges. I, did, I do have to modify my loom and my process mm -hmm. to be able to construct them all as one piece. And they, the, thing about, the thing about them is they follow that rule of origami where you don't, you don't cut or tape or glue. So the cloth, the cloth itself, the, or the pieces themselves are not made with any cutting or sewing or gluing. Mm -hmm. So it, the pieces themselves are all just made as one, one piece. Then they're folded. Sometimes I do have to sew them into place, but I, I like that I follow that sort of ru the rule, the, the 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 laws of origami. Amazing! You had uh, you were able to cover so many of my follow up questions about some of the technical uh, uh, parts, and specifically, we have in in the show that's up right now. In, in our museum, uh, you have some beautiful pieces or uh, uh, the origami structures from 2020 and that are in the case. And I don't know if there's anything that you wanted to add about those, the three-dimensional, three-dimensionality or the physical kind of. Yeah, curiously enough, those pieces in the show are not really from that discontinuous pleat. Yeah, right. Of work. They are, pocket double weaves that have rigid plastic in um, pieces inserted in between the layers. Um, again, I tend to work out some of the problems with, you know, in paper before I, before I weave. So those really are not, I mean, I think they're more in line with, a, with K Sakama Chase boxes mm -hmm. than my own um, for lack of a better word, in, innovation with the the weaving origami iteration that that I that that I developed or or led me in another direction, but they are they're they're kind of box like, and they're I like that they're they're woven flat, they're but they fold into a, a two uh, like a three D form. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I like to to refer to that you know that thinking between you know two D and three D as sort of like an origami mindset mm -hmm. um, where you construct something with flat pieces and then it folds up into kind of a three D form. Sure. So then um, it's an evolution of a whole other kind of part of your work. Um, yeah, and because uh, the the technical, uh, the, the plastic or the rigid material, and even from uh, reading about your other origami work, uh, the metal bars that are, mm -hmm. um, I, I wonder if you could just say something, you know, quick about that technical part of it. Well, Creating the discontinuous pleats. It, um, the, the structure is not a double weave construction, mm. but it's a, it's a structure where I had to really innovate and deal with how to take the tension completely off a section of work and you know how how to how to to deal with so so I need I need to back up a little bit. Tension is one of the most important things 
that you need in in weaving. You need you need taut yarns so you can weave other yarns into them. If you remove the tension completely off some of the yarns, it's it's really difficult to weave. So the metal bars, I I integrated into the weaving process to allow me to add tension back on areas of the warp that were not really under tension at, at the time. It was almost like a scaffolding that I um, mm -hmm. brought into the, the weaving process. And if you if you looked at the back of my loom, you know, parts of the warp were not attached to the loom at all. They were just being weighted by water bottles. And it was kind of a Frankenstein situation where I wanted to make something happen and had to figure it out mm -hmm. and thought through different different ways of doing it. You know, er early on, I had used some other other methods, but I came on to the the metal bar idea. Um, as a, as a way to problem solve. Now I've moved past the metal bars to another, not another solution, which I find even easier. I haven't really documented it much, but um, I, I think that there's, you know, if there's a will, there's a way. You, you, you find a way to make the thing that's in your mind, you know, how, how do you bring your, eye, your ideas to life? You innovate you look for ways around the rules. That's so inspiring. And that's uh, really on every piece and every uh, uh, piece of your work that I've seen that really comes through loud, loud and clear. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, exploration, innovation, uh, again and again, problem solving. I think uh, you talk about that uh, quite a bit. I don't know if this is the appropriate place to ask about it, but um, I mean, this idea of of structure and pushing structure within certain limitations or different uh, kind of structural maps that you set out or plans that you've set out uh, for each piece, but the idea of repetition and variation and, and rhythm, I, I see that coming through uh, also very strong and I find it uh, so beautiful throughout your work. Yeah, I'm thinking about music a lot lately and how I'm you know I'm finding some some similarities between music and weaving mm -hmm. and the uh, um like the time signatures of music kind of relate to, to like what set are you weaving your yarns at and that's S E T T that's a weaving term that describes like your 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 density of your warp. Mm -hmm. um, also, like what weave structures are you weaving? That that's that that's somehow relates to to music. Um, so I'm 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 finding a lot of I mean it's a really rich territory to think about rhythm and um, you know all the little minute details that go into a weaving. You got you know what yarn are you using? Is it matte? Is it shiny? Um, are you putting stripes? Are you incorporating stripes? Or are you just kind of letting the structure, you know, drive, you know, drive the surface? Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I like to articulate um, texture through structure sometimes. So there's a, there's a, just, 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 there's just so many things to explore. It's a sure. it's a rich landscape. No, I I, I love that too. Um, this um, you mentioned again and again is this uh, you know this surface interest and in texture and the dimensionality. And I mean in in musical terms, um, yeah, that would be uh, like density and 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 timbre. Um, and so, but you have that multiple dimensions, which again it goes back to. Uh, the optical art, which is just another way of of creating, uh, you know, another 
type of piece or whatever you know landscape that you're creating uh, because you're creating uh, multiple optics and multiple illusions. Yeah. Um, I uh, wanted to uh, love to hear some more about uh, the relationship between your work and ab abstraction and how you view that and maybe even um, perception kind of a little bit more on these lines of, of optics. Well, I'm drawn to abstract art. I, I'm not really telling a narrative that's not my strength. I'm not. I'm not really a storyteller. Um, I love the pure, the purely formal, visual as you know approach mm. to art making. Um, I think once I I really started to look at you know artists that that I that I loved, um, you know, I was looking at a lot of minimalism mm -hmm. and mid-century painting and, you know, thinking about, so, so, you know, when, when I look at art, it's natural for me to, you know, think about how it relates back to weaving for me. So a lot, a lot of the artwork that I love to look at, I'm always thinking, you know, how could I, how could I weave that? I'm not, I'm not trying to like steal anybody's ideas, but it's, it's hard to not walk away from inspirational um, work and think, you know, how, how does that relate to my, my practice? So, you know, as you can see, I don't weave like the Mona Lisa. I have limitations. Like I don't, I'm not a jacquard weaver. I'm not a tapestry weaver. I'm a loom based. I'm a loom loom structure based weaver, and I I like exploring the these this hybrid between um, loom controlled structures and hand manipulation. Or also another way to think about it is I like to explore um, uh, a combination of jacquard thinking and planning but shaft loom execution. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I, I have limit limitations with, with loom control um, structures, but I've really landed on some, some new or some techniques that work for me to introduce diagonal lines and all kinds of structures and stripes and textures um, I like to keep, I like to keep the compositions pretty simple, but really push the, you know, the surface interest, the mm -hmm. texture, the interplay of the, the yarns, and the colors, almost in a what pointillism fashion where the yarns are kind of making discernible tones, but those tones are mixing in your eye. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike unlike paint, where you're mixing the the paints and putting them on to the the canvas, weaving with weaving is the canvas. Weaving has shapes and colors that are embedded in the very surface of of the cloth itself. Love that, and uh, and and that goes to the question you brought up earlier um, about selecting the material and how kind of critical that is in the color and the texture and, the, and even the, the scale probably of the piece. I, 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 I'm, the the follow-up to that might be pre-planning and mapping out your compositional process uh, ahead of time, not even on the loom, but on in sketches, um, which do, is that part of your practice? Yeah, I, I tend to plan heavily for for the work. I wish that I mean I'm I'm looking for ways to introduce a little bit more improvisation and a little bit more um, you know ch like chance by choice kind of kind of notion. Um, I I start with a gridded notebook. I I sketch a lot. I spend a lot of time. Um, just making little geometric compositions. What what do I like? What, and you know, if I'm if I'm working with certain 
size. I'll set up a whole page of, let's just say, 11 by 14 mm. squares, and I'll just get busy banging out, you know, tens and tens of compositions. Like, what, what am I drawn to? How do I like this composition? And then from there, I'll start thinking about, um, I mean, I generally weave in, in linen, and I mm. also weave in in cotton. And the, the reason that I, um, I mean, I love, I love linen, but I can't buy linen in a variety of pre-dyed colors. So mm. I dye my own linen. On the other hand, cotton, I can, I can buy cotton in every color of the rainbow. And I, I do that for convenience, but I also over dye, I tie dye cotton yarn to, to bring a little bit more interest to it. Um, if I'm working on something that's more intimate, then I'll use a fine, you know, the like a finer yarn. But if I'm we weaving like a bigger, chunkier idea, like these pieces back here, they're actually um, a heavy, heavy cotton that's doubled up. Like I'll use two yarns and treat it as one um, to kind of beef up the the texture. Um, that's that's one way that I can I can work larger. They're beautiful. What are the names of the pieces behind you? Um, I think this one's called Pixelville. Yeah. Green red or red green. I can't remember. And this one is Pixelville blue orange. So I'm kind of like, kind of addressing these sort of um, architectural fantasy. I mean, but in a really loose, loose abstract way, it's not really meant to be a real space, but you know, there's a, there's a, there are gradients involved and lots of weave structures and textures and stripes and um, but they are not based on a real, real space. But they're your space. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, <laughs> my interior space, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and I think, so for those in our audience um, who aren't weavers, including myself, um, who I, as the more that I learn about weaving and admire it, uh, one of the things that really, um, just blows me away is the focus and dedication and the, du the duration of, um, of the work. Um, and I wonder if you could just uh, talk about that. I mean, it almost seems like there has to be a meditative, I mean, in order for it to be successful and to, uh, to stay in, in it, I'm sure that it's just like anything else, like running or any other type of, of kind of practice uh, or you know artistic practice is uh, that the more you do it, the kind of the more endurance that you have. But I would love to hear a little bit about, you know, about how you view that or if you or even think about that at all anymore. Well, I've been doing it a really long time, and I I mean my my commitment just deepens. Um, the, lo the longer that I that I weave I you know weaving is how I make sense of the world around me it's how I relate to you know the, the world and 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 people and and art um I you know I I weave it it holds me together I I know a lot of other weavers who who feel the same way and they 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 love weaving people who love weaving really love weaving. Um, the notion of like med meditation, I, I mean, I'd certainly like to address that because it's not really an activity that I can check out and just, sure. you know, but, 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 but I mean, there are, there are a lot of little um, ordered systems that I use to keep me, um, kind of keep me on track you know, from the from the get go, from the from the minute I start making my warp to when I'm threading my loom to when I'm weaving, you know, all of these 
other little, you know, I have a lot of ordered systems that help me like, so I use ordered systems so I can check out a little bit, mm -hmm. but generally with pieces like, like this or the, the black and white piece that's at the ex exhibition, I really have to be focused and I really have to, to um, stay in thought, deep thought about what I'm doing or I'll mess up. And I, I really, I, if I, if I make mistakes, I do unweave things mm -hmm. because I, it's just, who I am. No, so I think that um, uh, uh, the idea of the physicality of uh, durational work, um, you know, that I think is really fascinating to me. And um, because it, uh, I can only imagine how long these pieces take and, uh, it, and meditative wasn't the right word because you're, you're saying that it actually takes an enormous amount of, um, of, of focus and and I don't know if that's exactly where you left off, but I think it, it is a good kind of bridge to the piece that's in, in the show here, the X-ray fold, which uh, I think I would love to hear more about this beautiful piece, if, if you could tell us about that. Well, X-ray folds came about because I have, you know, I have been developing a body of weave structures that are compatible with double weave. Mm -hmm. And, you know, wanted to use a strong black and white or high, high contrast um, color palette. And then these weave structures that I had been drafting and sampling over many years to articulate um, translucency and overlapping and also that dimension and volume and that was I mean I didn't know how it was going to turn out because there was a lot of like intense uh like picking up the the weave structures with a stick mm, and wow. so that that piece is a real hybrid of loom controlled structures and hand manipulation and I Again, I I didn't know, but I was I was really pleased that it turned out the way it did, and it gave me a lot of confidence to um, keep going in that style. And now I'm you know I have three pieces in the show here that sold. I'm working on four more for the gallery to take to to Chicago. So it was it, you know it was a leap of faith. Like, can I make this? Can I make this happen? Can I bring this to life? And it it turned out that it was a door that led to another door that's leading me to another door. And I see a lot of potential for that um, optical, high contrast exploration of you know translucency and transparency and overlap and um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep exploring that 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 notion but i'm really happy that 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 piece is in in the exhibition it's it's outstanding and uh but it is kind of a connection or the evolution of your work with origami yeah yeah again again i, I mentioned earlier like i love to explore dimension whether it be physical or visual and, mm -hmm. and lately i feel like i'm exploring that dimension more visually but um, who, who knows? Life is long unless it's not. <laughs> um, right. So we'll 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 see where where it continues to take me. But there are, I mean, there are some more purely structural dimensional forms that I I'd like to get back to, and um, I haven't I haven't really done any of the origami pieces in a little while and kind of it itching to get back to that but you're 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 right that the dimension um depicted visually is is kind of where where that piece took me thank you um i also would love to hear a bit about it's not in the show here but it's a fascinating incredible piece uh social fabric and i know that it's it has a, a kind of complex 
origin story, but it almost seems like a departure to or, or a, another avenue in your work. Yeah. Yeah, I was preparing for the, sh the first show at Johansson Projects in 2022. Um, I mean, that 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 piece came to me over a while um, after over over several years, but during 2020, yeah, after after George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter marches, um, I had participated in several marches with my family, and I felt I felt really connected with that movement, and I felt connected with the people, and. You know, as an abstract artist, I just didn't really know how to articulate those feelings that I was having because I'm I'm not into narrative work and I don't I don't tell a story with my work. But I, I kept going back to weave structure to just like articulate how I was feeling connected to that movement and those and those people. So if you if you look back into my sketchbook, I'm just drawing like blown up weave structures. Mm that are, the, the, and they just, it's just sort of like kind of morphed into, well, how can I, how can I blow these weave structures up to, to talk about, you know, a larger, you know, the fabric of society or, you know, think, think, think back to all of the metaphors that we use that are related to fabric. Like, you know, you tie the knot, you know, there's a safety net, you know, we're cut from the same cloth social fabric, you know, on and on and on. Um, so I, I started thinking thinking in, in, in those terms and then social fabric, um, you know, became more of a reality. And then I, I wanted to, I wanted to weave something like a big, like, like make a big statement in the, in the show at Johansson. So that, that piece came to, to life and, it's you're you're right. It's opened up a different avenue for me. Um, it's actually it's on its third exhibition now, mm -hmm. and I've got several offers to buy that piece. I'm not interested in selling that exact piece right now, and I'm going to be working on a commission for somebody else based on that piece in 2024. Um, and I'd like to. I really would like to do a whole series of big big giant blown up weave structures, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't it be cool to have, you know, a big plaid or a big houndstooth or other weave structures that were six six feet or, or nine feet, you know, giant. Um, also, also I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to show a broader audience the beauty of weave structure mm -hmm. and like how how best to you emphasize something by blowing it up. Um, so I mean that's another reason why I think that piece um, has struck a nerve because we all are surrounded by cloth from the you know the minute we're born until we die. We we have cloth in our lives, you know daily and it's it's an importance like we can't live without cloth it keeps us warm it provides um you know warmth and you know we wear our team's jersey and we we communicate who we are what team we're on um you know all our our flags are made from from cloth it's it's an important part of our our society Absolutely. It, um, it's so inspiring. It's such an inspiring work. And I, uh, it, it, it does even from across the country, reading about it and just, uh, you know, hearing you talk about it while you were here, um, it, it, it resonates and uh, it's, it's really beautiful. So thank you uh, for, for finding that direction and uh, finding that avenue. Um, before we, we end our session, I guess I would like to go back to this idea of inspiration and lineage. I think it would uh, it would be a nice way um, just to hear a bit about. Um, we talked to you know some about ins thing the things that are around you, the people that uh, that you are inspired by. But um, is there anything that you would want to say 
about um, this, this idea of lineage as we close out. Oh, you know, I, you know, be, being part of this exhibition has really been profound in, in the, in the way of, of thinking about how I'm, I'm really just, uh, you know, part of a long relay race where, you know, people are handing the baton off to the next runner or the next generation. And um, I've, you know, I've had a really beautiful conversation with my undergraduate professor who studied with Trude Germain Prayer. Um, her name is Jane Lackey. And we, we talked about that a little bit. Um, but I think what we're doing you now, the artists, are, you know, artists who are working in the medium of weaving now are not, um, you know, are not, you know, creating brand new things. We're all inspired by the same, um, the same history. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I look back to, you know, beyond, Bauhaus, uh, or I'm sorry, beyond Black Mountain College, you know, I, I, I strongly look at, at Bauhaus as an inspiration. Um, you know, the Bauhaus weavers were talented artists. Because they were female, they they weren't allowed to be in any other department, but but weaving in glass, I think, or maybe, maybe ceramics. Mm -hmm. So weaving benefited from having those bright, ambitious, talented artists study and innovate and push, you know, and elevate weaving, not only as an art form, but push to the aesthetics of textile design mm -hmm. further than it, than it was. And, you know, you know, we, we benefited from that, and I benef benefited from that. Not not only studying weaving as an art form, but working in industry. I I got a, a lot of that um, benefit by the 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 specific or special journey that I took through weaving. Amazing. Well, um, I love that uh, image. Uh, of the relay race. Um, thank you. Thank you, Susie, for uh, joining me today and uh, joining our audience and being part of uh, this exhibition. My pleasure. Thank you so much.